Hey guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guy. Before I get into this review, I'm just going to tell you I am so excited. I am so close to getting uh, my outside studio thing. Um, I, I'm I'm bursting. I, I, I can't wait till um, I can get it and it's out in the garden and I can move all this stuff out there. I am so, so excited. I'm so close to getting it. Uh, I can say, you know, a lot of people have made... Uh, donations and things like that and joined up to the Patreon account and all of the anything that has been donated to the channel or um, you know all, all the Patreon money that I get and any ad money that I get from uh, you know G Google and things like that it all goes straight back into this channel uh, it goes into everything I'm doing here and all I can say is once I get myself set up in this little studio thing I hope and I am going to do my best to improve upon this channel quite dramatically uh, I'm hoping that the content will be a lot more um, you can just see Coda's nose there popping in uh, he's just resting on the table um, but I hope the content will be there will be a lot more content and um, a lot more live streams things like that I'll have my own space, me and Coda are going to be sitting out there, um, I'm going to buy a little bed for him, he's going to have his own little bed out there and everything, um, but because I have my own space, I can do the videos as and when I want, here when I'm in the living room, I can only do them uh, very short windows, um, like when my wife is not at work or anything like that, or my daughter is not at college, when they're at home, I can't really do anything in the living room, uh, like doing videos, voiceovers, things like that, because I need silence, and it's not fair to ask them to get out of the living room for me to do that. So uh, I, I'm just, I, I, I'm so excited about this, guys, and I, um, I hope that going forward, uh, you'll you'll notice a difference. And like I say, any any donations that are made or anything like that, um. It'll all be going into this, you know, uh, I'm going to be painting it, I'm going to hang my own artwork up in there, I'm hoping that I'm going to have a nice background for when I'm doing live streams, things like that. I'm so, so excited and there is one person in particular that has helped me so much, I, I'm not, I can't mention the person but this person knows who they are and without this person I don't know where I'd be. Uh, I have made so many friends and so many, I've met so many wonderful people through doing this this channel and um, it humbles me beyond words um, at the generosity, the kindness uh, that all of you show me. Um, I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to get on with the review because I can feel myself choking up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to get on with the review and uh, I'm just going to put a line to this. Obviously, when the the uh, when I get the the, out, the the studio and stuff like that, I will be doing like a, a really cool video about that. But uh, until then, let's just get on with this review video. So as you can see here, I've got... Uh, Kind of like a review of the Pastelo colour pencils, but also a comparison between this 50 set of pastel tone pencils, colour pencils, and comparing it against the, the Holbein 50 set of pastel tone pencils that they have. So, I would say in the last year there has been a explosion of a, a pastel tone sets coming out. From lots of different companies, Stadler have done it, um, uh, Brutfuner have done it, Lo lots of different companies are, are coming out with sets and they range from sets of 6, 12, 24 right up to 50. 50 is the largest pastel, individual just pastel tone set that I have uh, come across. Now, I can remember when I first started doing reviews, uh, especially within the marker, the, the alcohol markers, um, one of the biggest advantages that the Copic markers had over the cheaper brands that was coming out was that they had these these really, really pale toned uh, colours in their arsenal. And the thing about that is, on their own, on paper, they are almost invisible. 
uh, certain colors are very very weak but when you add them into other colors and you're creating gradients and things like that they are vital and like I say this is what 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 a lot of the the cheaper brand alcohol marker companies were were lacking when it came to like you know brush tips and all the rest of it these cheaper brand companies pretty much had everything down and the markers themselves were almost identical to Copics some of them were um, it was just these pastel tones these really really pale tones that were missing and obviously like I say in the last year two years the the alcohol marker companies have recognize that and they have started adding these colors to the range oh who who companies like that uh rx uh, as well so but more recently than that the color pencil companies have been doing the same thing and again it's an incredibly welcomed addition but as with the alcohol markers on their own sets as a set on their own they're pretty much useless they're you know the there's not a lot you can do with them. I mean, if you just want to sit and colour and, and draw macaroons all day, then that's what they're good for. Other than, or, or like ice creams and things like that. Other than that, on their own, as a standalone set of pencils, they're not that great. But they are vital whenever you complement them with another set of pencils. And for the most part, it doesn't matter what set of pencils you're using. Faber Castell Polychromos, some maybe some of the like the the Dermot Color Soft or the the Dermot Lightfast. You add in some of these pastel tone colors, and with the exception of Lightfast, which I'll get into in a sec in a second, the 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 two pencils will marry in quite well. But at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is the tones. Now, this 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 video is primarily talking about these pencils, but what but I also want to compare them to the Holben. Uh, 50 set of pastel tones that they have because for the longest time Holbin really were the only set that provided these beautiful pastel tones but their prices were unbelievably high and factoring into the into the 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 situation with Holbin was that a lot of the time you had the export from Japan which again was even more money and so that was a big stumbling block for a lot of people but again more recently in america like the likes of blix and here in the uk jackson's and i'm sure if you look around your your whatever country you live in jackson's and blix have started uh stocking the holbin color pencils in sets and also in open stock which was the biggest problems that holbin ever had so that what that did was that that made Holbin color pencils, even though the prices were high, uh, a lot more attractive. But let's get down into taking a look at these pastel color pencils first of all. So, as you can see, it's a, it's it's a set of fifty. Now, the thing ab about these pencils is they are incredibly inexpensive, depending where you look. Now, I've got prices over on the written review, as you know. I always I never talk about the prices like specific prices here on the channel because prices change all the time and on the written review I can change that but here I can't so if you go across there you'll see the different prices but for our but for for just for comparison's sake uh, on this video you can you can for this set of pencils you can find them for maybe 12 pound on eBay um, but then somewhere else I've seen them as high as uh, 37 pounds so that's a big jump so it really all depends on where you look also as well they're not the easiest pencils to find at the minute but having said that for all you color pencil artists I am sure you have noticed that a lot of color pencils are are difficult to find at the minute whether it's um, you know getting open stock pencils or whatever and a lot of that is down to all the different terrible things that's going on in the world today which I just do not want to talk about but that is one of the issues you know you're talking about stock availability transportation borders being closed all these other terrible things that are going on in the world it is affecting not just colored pencils but lots of different things getting through so let's let's take a look at these pencils now 
one of the things that I noticed, and, and I think this is re hugely important when you're talking about a, a, a pencil, but even more so when you're talking about a pencil that is as cheap as this for a set of 50. So, as you can see here, this is the palette. Now, palette is a very personal thing. Uh, it depends what colours you're looking for, uh, that type of thing. But when it comes down to these pastel tones, it's not so personal because you are adding it into whatever... Um, whatever palette you already have to help you enhance those gradients. But you can see here on the Pastelo swatch, um, there is a really, really nice range of light muted tones. Uh, some really nice skin tones here, what you would call skin tones. Uh, some beautiful greens, some beautiful blues, uh, purples, like rosy colors, uh, peachy colors. And very, very pale pinks and, and lemons, that type of thing. Exactly what you would expect to find in a pastel set. The If you look at the, the actual pencils, so the, the entirety of the barrel is lacquered the same colour as the core. And the lacquer colour on the, on the barrel doesn't match up perfectly to the, the core, but it's not bad. But I would always advise people to stay clear of um of relying on the color of the barrel or the pigment identifier too much it's always important that you create your own swatch of whatever set of pencils not just pastel pencils whenever you get the set and you want to start using it but one of the things so the barrel itself is is lacquered the same color as the core the core on these pencils is 4.3 mil which is a really generous core. And the barrel is only 7.7 mil. So this pencil is all core, uh, which is really, really unexpected for an inexpensive set of pencils. Now along the barrel here, we have uh, what it just says pastel, obviously just to say, you know, that these are pastel tones uh, and then colored pencil beside it there, which obviously because People that are new to colour pencils or pastel pencils that may not even know the pastel pencils exist, they could very easily mistake these as pastel pencils and, you know, when they start using them, realise that they're not. So they've got coloured pencil on the barrel here. There's a little kind of like what looks like circular disc thing here as an icon on the, on the barrel as well, separating uh, coloured pencil and the company name, which is Astra CE. Uh, each barrel has this little white line here and it just separates the end which is normally where you would find like your, your pigment identifier just this inch long piece at the end but I've obviously explained that, that already the, the entirety of the barrel is the pigment identifier the one of the biggest problems I found about these pencils is and I, I you know I talk about this all the time there is no pigment name or number on the barrel <coughs> and there's nothing on this on the um on the packaging and I couldn't find anything on the website now I said that about the Stadler and some people came back and said you know the the the, the name is on the website you just got to look and dig for it um, so I got that wrong so if anybody has found like a, anything that represents these pencils and how to find out what the, the pigment name is then please let me know but I couldn't find anything and where the big problem with this lies is, so you get your set of pencils and you create your swatch. And most people, when they create their swatch, will do as I did. You, you know, you lift out your first pencil, colour it down on your paper and put it back in. And so the the swatch is basically in the order that, the, that you see the pencils. And that's all very well and dandy. But you know that when you are working and you've got pencils all over the desk and what have you, Unless you're very stringent on keeping everything back in order, um, things could go awry. And then what you've got to do is, the next time that you'd go to do a drawing or anything like that, and you go to use these, you're going to have to create the swatch again. And and I know that there's other ways that you can get around this, like putting tape on the pencil and putting the, the pigment name down that way. Or... Um, you know, lots of people have come up with lots of ingenious ways of... of uh, indicating the pigment name or a number 
on the pencils in the past. But, you know, not everybody has the time and the patience to sit down and create all that type of stuff. Um, you know, creating little stickers with pigment numbers on them or pigment names on them. And you shouldn't really, in this day and age, it's clearly easy to print stuff on pencil barrels. I mean, there's enough information on this pencil already uh, for them to just add a number, even a number, uh, which would help you then correspond. Like if you look at this swatch here, right? So the swatch is there, but there's nothing on this swatch. If I were to jumble all these pencils up, I wouldn't know which which pencil created that 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 color. So if I wanted to get that color, I'm going to have to lift out at least three or four different pencils and try to start marrying them up to this color. Um, and that that's where the problem comes with nothing being on the on the barrel with regards to pigment identification. It's not necessarily um, because we need to know that a green pencil is a green pencil, so it needs to say green on it or apple or something like that. That's not necessarily the reason. The biggest reason is for selection selecting your colors and being able to quickly select the color that you see on your swatch and you know the pencil that you need so you can just grab dip in and get it and use that color that you you look at and you think that's gonna that's gonna do well in my my drawing now as i always do i do a layer test and a blending test with the pencils i'll get i'll get around to talking about the core in a second um and as you can see here, I've got my layer test with these past uh, pastel um, pencils. And um, i done this test on Bristol Vellum, Strathmore Bristol Vellum paper, which is uh, quite a smooth paper, but it's got a really nice, you know, it's still got a texture there. Uh, it allows you to, for a lot of pencils, to still be able to create that layer, that buildup of layers, um, without having too much issue whenever it comes to uh, either using odorless mineral spirits or using your colorless blender to push all that pigment down into the paper and get rid of that white. Uh, you, so you can see here with the five layers, the pencils layer beautifully. They build up absolutely beautifully on top of each other. You can see here on the, 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 the last column uh, this is just a single heavy application and that's just to show you uh, what the pigment looks like with he a heavy hand basically putting a lot of pressure on the pencil um, as opposed to these layer buildups and also as well just for uh, you know just for um, the, the purpose of this this test and all the other layer tests that I do when I'm doing these layer tests I hold the pencil right at the very end. So I'm basically all I'm doing is is I'm allowing the weight of the pencil to create the 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 layer. And I do that all the way up to the fifth layer and then obviously with the heavy application I'm right down here at the core and I'm putting a lot of pressure down. The reason why I do that is because for color pencil artists who who do build up on the layers, a lot of them will will layer up this way. Um you want to be very, very light-handed on your layers. Uh, so, and the reason why you want to work like that is because if you need to remove a layer or something like that, you can go in with your uh, putty eraser and just gently dab out a layer without having to go in if like you created a heavy application and you went in with an eraser, an electric eraser or any other type of eraser and you're sitting rubbing at the paper, you're damaging the paper, you're damaging the tooth of the paper and it's just going to create problems for you going forward and, and reapplying uh, any any layers on top of that. So it's just a tip. With regards to the, um, the blending test, it's really difficult to do that with these pastel tone pencils. Uh, the purpose of the blending test is just to demonstrate whether uh, I can create a third color with two other colors. So like I'll get a red and a, a, a yellow to create an orange. I'll get a blue and a yellow to create a green. And I'll get uh, the, the red and the blue to create a purple. But with these pastel tones, it's really difficult to, 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 to get that and to demonstrate it properly. So... Uh, I haven't done that. What I can say is the core on the, the, the pastel layer 
or sorry, the, the core on the pastel oak pencils is really, really nice. So I have created my own scale, and I think this is the best way of representing um, this, uh, me describing a core to you guys. So if you think of a scale, and you have Prismacolor the zero as the softest core that I have tested thus far, and then you go right up to number 10, and that is the Derwent Artist Pencil, which is the hardest core that I have tested thus far. I would put these past, though, in around about number 3, uh, 3 or 4, in terms of softness towards closer to the Prismacolor, but obviously not way down there with Prismacolor. Whenever I'm doing my reviews and I'm doing my tests and stuff like that, that's how I visualise, you know, being able to describe the, the core to you guys there when i was doing my testing with these pencils there was no grittiness there was no um issues with the layer and or anything like that sometimes in cheaper pencils you can uh because there might be more uh binding agent in the pencil there might be a little bit more grit and uh, sometimes that can be uh, a real nuisance. It can cause scratches across the paper. That wasn't the case with these pencils at all. They were very, very smooth when I was layering. And um, it also as well when I done these heavier applications again, no issues whatsoever. No, no, like I say, no grittiness or anything like that. So really, really nice core. Um, sharpening the pencils was no issues either um the only issue i had was with one pencil it was this kind of like jade green color and as you can see there there was just a little bit of a nick here close to um like right at the top i should imagine that's just an issue with this wood casing and it more than likely will go as i sharpened down but that was the only issue i had and even so even though that there's this like nick in the pencil um the core is still firmly in place. It hasn't made the core shatter or fall out or anything like that. It's just a little bit juggy whenever I'm using the manual sharpener. So now on to a little bit of a comparison here. Now, one of the things that I mentioned about the uh, Pastelo pencil was the size of the core and size of the barrel. It was The, the pencil is all core, very little barrel. Um, with the, the Holbin, it also has a generous core, but the, the core of the Holbin is about 4 millimeters, as opposed to the Pastelo 4.3 millimeter core. The barrel of the uh, Holbin is 7.8, 7.9, um, as opposed to the 7.7 .7 millimeter barrel of the Pastelo, so... Again, a slightly bigger, so in other words, the, the core to, the, the ratio of the core to barrel is better for the Pastelo. Uh, you definitely get more core uh, in that pencil than you do barrel. Um, one of the advantages or, or um, pros against the, the, the Holbins, and bearing in mind here, okay, the, the price the price difference in these two sets is astronomical and isn't even worth discussing, really. Uh, what we're trying to accomplish here is, can the Pastelo, or are the Pastelo pencils a good enough substitute for the Holbin 50 set of pastel colours? So that's what we're trying to go for here. We're not trying to say, are the Pastelo a better pencil, necessarily? Um, but let, I mean, you can be the judge. I'll just give you the facts and you, you make up your mind what you think. So the information on the barrel of the, the Holbin is much more comprehensive. So obviously here along the side, we've got the Holbin Artist Color Pencil made in Japan. As with the Pastelo, the entirety of the barrel is the pigment identifier. On the opposite side of the barrel, we have a uh, Holbin works ltd obviously the name of the company we have a, a light fast rate in here now i've spoke about the light fast issue of the holden before i'll have a link down below you can go across and watch that video if you wanted to see what i was talking about 
Uh, there is a pigment name here also printed on the barrel, which is obviously, as I explained earlier on in this video, uh, how important it is to have some reference to the pigment. Uh, and then at the very end here, we have a, a, a pigment identifier number um, also. So in terms in terms of the just the, the physical attributes of the two pencils, uh, Pastelo has a much thicker core than the, the Holbein. Uh, in terms of the performance of the cores, I'll show you that. Actually, I'll come back to the performance of the core because I'll, I'll show you that on paper. So, as I mentioned, the uh, the, the palettes are uh, a colour pencil or any palette is a personal thing to the artist using it. And um, But I, I, I said not so much with these pastel tones because they are... Um, really used alongside they're used to complement the set of pencils but as you can see here uh this is the, the the 50 pastel tones that are in the holbin and if you go across to the written review you'll be able to see these two swatches side by side or kind of like uh, one above one below um but you might be able to get a better perspective of the colors because I'm just showing you the images here on the screen and then I'm going to have to show you another image afterwards. But over there, you'll be able to see them side by side. But as you can see here, one of the things that uh, come is available in the 50 set of the Holden Pastels is the uh, Illuminous colors down at the bottom. Now, I don't know whether if you would ever use those in your artwork or anything like that. I know a lot of artists do and the art that they create with these type of uh, luminous colours is just phenomenal. But Sorry, excuse me. Um, but one of the things I like about the Holbin um, palette is these ivory, sand, beige, uh, flesh... Uh, these these fleshy colors here, these like cork, peach, uh, ash rose. I love these kind of like ashy rose, uh, gray rose colors that you get in certain sets. Uh, sea fog, another beautiful color. No, you don't really get those. There are a couple of, um, there are a few fleshy type tones in the pastelo. Uh, I would say, I would, I think I would have to say that. For me personally, the greens in the in the Holbin are are a little bit more along the my taste, my own personal taste. But you know, you can take a look at the palettes yourself and decide for yourself which you think is the the more comprehensive palette for what you might use uh, pastel tone pencils for. Now, this is one of the tests that you're really going to see the 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 difference if there is any difference in the two pencils. Uh, in terms of how they perform on darker papers. I've got, a, as you can see here, a little bit of a swatch on the black paper. Uh, I've got some tone tan paper, which I'll show you in a second. And um, obviously, if you need, to, if you would like to know more about the actual Holden pencils, um, you can go across to my, I'll have a link to it down below. You can go across and find out more about the actual Holden pencil and the, the swatch of the entire 150 range. What we're just talking about here is just the, the 50 pastel set from Holman. But as you can see here, the, the pastel O colors are right at the, at the top and the Holman colors are down, right down at the bottom. Now I've said before, when I do these dark tests, uh, dark paper tests, they don't define whether the pencil is good or bad. All they do is they show the artist um, who may, want to use darker papers uh how the how the pencil is going to perform in terms of translucency or opaqueness uh opaqueness means that um it's nice and thick and you're not going to be able to see the darkness of the paper uh through a through the layer that you um apply and translucent just means that when you apply the layer you're still going to be able to see the darkness of the paper through it slightly uh, that's very much the case here with the pastel and the Holden. I would say, to my eye, the pastel looks very translucent as opposed to the Holden, which looks very much more opaque on the black paper. Again, this will be over in the Art Gear Guide. Uh, you can click on the image, enlarge it, and inspect this at your own leisure. Uh, zoom in to the colours and what have you in the pencil strokes. 
Again, we have the tone tan here. Now, I tried to get the colours as close as possible, so you can see there that I wasn't even able to really do it here with the, the, the lighter pinks. Um, but nevertheless, again, I think with this one here, this tone tan, it's slightly closer, but that's obviously down to the fact that it's a lighter paper, and so therefore the uh, translucency and opaqueness isn't going to really be demonstrated as well here but I know a lot of color pencil artists use this type of paper and so I just wanted to show you the difference between the two pencils on this paper okay guys so that's it really for my review of the pastelo and comparison of these two pencils as well now I know I don't talk about the prices I don't want to I'm just going to mention it here because it is a big factor. Uh, but please understand that these prices are subject to change. Uh, I'm doing this video here. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you, you could be watching this in. But it is the uh, 7th of March 2022. So uh, I had to think there for a second. Um, so it's uh, 7th of March 2022. And currently, the Pastelo, you can pick them up here in the UK for around about £12, at, at, a, at a stretch about £37. The 50 set of Holborn, the cheapest that I could find them was Jackson's, and that was on an offer for £113. I've never seen them lower than £113, and that is just for the 50 set of pastel tone pencils. Normally... In Jackson's, the, the pastel tone um, Holbin set, 50 set, is about 132. And that's roughly about where I see that the, the, those pencils lie. Around about that 132, 150 mark. In America as well, it's roughly about the same. Um, about, you know, $15 maybe for the pastelo. And then $150 or thereabouts. Sometimes sometimes more for the, the 50 set of Holbin pastel tones so you can see there there is a vast difference in prices um, and basically all you're going to get in terms of difference is that the the the, the swatches that i showed you the, the the palettes and again i personally don't think that with pastel colors the the swatch is or the the palette is too uh detrimental to what sets your brand because at the end of the day they're they're meant to complement another set of pencils. With regards to the Holbin, there is some light fast testing there. But again, I've spoken about the light fast um, issues that I've discovered with Holbin. And you can see more about that in the link that I'll have down below. Basically, all it is is um, there's a lot of controversy around the light fast ratings on the Holbin. Some people have said that they are ASTM rated. I dispute that because um, any company that goes to the lengths of having their pencils ASTM'd or Blue Will um, light fast tested, it, it, they, they make a common knowledge on their website, their packaging or the pencils. Somewhere along the line, they'll make it, they'll make it uh, known because it's a big deal and it it's that type, it's one of those two that... that helps really provide um, confidence to the artists that the, the colours that they're going to use are light fast and, and well tested as well. These two standards, Blue Wool and uh, ASTM, are the two major standards for light fast testing anything. And so uh, they are standards that you can confidently use your artwork and know that it's going to withstand whatever the light fast test is when light fast testing is done in-house there is a little bit of doubt as to whether it will withstand 150 years because we don't know what type of methods that they're using to uh, come up with their results other than doing a swatch sticking it in a window for however long and then coming back and looking at the results um which doesn't bode, uh, that's not a, a, a formidable test that's going to give you, as an artist, a representation of 150 years or 100 years of light. Uh, you can't do it by sticking uh, some colours in a windowsill 
uh, and expose it to, to light over a month, that's not going to cut it. It'll show you a little bit of fading or whatever, and it'll show you a little bit of what the uh, light fast or how, how the pencils are going to hold up to direct light. But it's not an ac- that's not an accurate test. And if you're an artist that's selling your own work, you need to have that accuracy. You need to have that stamp of approval to be able to tell your customers confidently that your pencils are light fast tested and they're not just light fast tested by some company sticking a swatch in a windowsill. They are light fast tested by either one of the two major standards for light fast testing. So that was my only issue with the light fast testing on the Holden color pencils. Um, the Pastelo also work beautifully well on adult coloring books. Now I haven't obviously used them all, but they work well on the adult coloring books that I used. But as do the the Holden. I hope I've provided you with enough information here for you to be able to make up your own mind as to, to what you would like to do in terms of getting a pastel set, a pastel tone set, whether you would. You know, you're quite happy to go down this route here, which is a much, much cheaper, uh, less, you know, expensive route. And you're going to get pretty much the same type of colours that, that are in this set. Whereas with the, the Holbin, you know, you can see yourself the difference in this in, in the, the, the quality of the pencils. And you would expect there to be different because of the price. Um, and, and other things like, you know, the name on the barrel, things like that pigment name on the barrel. But... Th- is all of that worth an extra hundred odd pound? Well, that's only a decision that you can make, or a hundred odd dollars. That's only a decision that you can make. Um, like I say, there are a lot of new pastel sets coming out, and I will be review. I've already reviewed a couple, and I've got a few more to do. So stick with the channel, and I will get these out to you as soon as possible. As soon as I've done them all individually, I'm going to do like a big. Um, comparison video of these pastel colors just to show you the different swatches the different pastel tones it could be said in some of these sets especially these 50 sets you know not all of these colors are really what you would consider pastel um some of them go outside that spectrum and go a little bit darker uh so it's a loose interpretation of the word of the term that we all know as a pastel tone uh, for for these larger 50 sets but anyway thank you so much guys if you've got any questions please leave them down below uh, also as well just check out the written review because any questions you might have might be answered over on the written review i do have some links down below i'll have a link to the written review if you want to go across and see that you can just go down there click on the link and it'll take you straight over to the the, the written review and i will also have a link down there as well for the uh uh, the Holbin, uh, the review of the Holbin color pencils as well, and I did a live stream about the the Holbin 150 set, so I'll have a link to that also. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you all again very very soon. Thanks, bye.